hook up. That's kind of a cliche in the, in the church circle. You know, I feel like I just hit bottom and all I could do is look up. I've heard a lot of people's testimonies like that. And here's the people of Jabesh Gilead. They're, they're rock bottom. They're in a corner. They're surrounded. They have run and run and run and run. And now here he is. And he's like, it's over, guys. I'm coming in. Like it or not. And they are willing, check this, they are willing to settle for less than God's best if they don't have to fight for it. If they don't have to change anything, they're willing to settle for less than God's best. If they don't have to change the way they've always reasoned things out, the way they've always they thought out. The way they, they thought out before was says, well, when I'm scared of commitment, when I'm scared of internal conflict, I'll run as far as I can possibly away in a different direction. And this has always been their philosophy. As long as I don't have to fight, I'll run. I'll run. It sounds tragic, doesn't it? What if, what if the very thing that God was wanting to accomplish, even the thing that came to your mind that you said, I wish was better, what if, what, if, what if the whole time God is saying, if you would ever just stand up to it, call it what it is, write it on paper, it, whatever needs to be done, and trust that I am with you in the midst of it, trust that I am bringing you the, the victory in this, you can see the scene wiped away today. Who would jump up and, go, and jump on the front lines of that? Yeah. What if we could look back 15 years down the road and we're faced with that same reality and we actually do individually stand up to whatever it is that's been running, that's been haunting, that's been chasing, that's been fighting, that's been battling and, then, and, for, and 15 years from now stand up to it and boom, there's victory. God works through. He, a supernatural strength raises up. Victory is won. It's conquered. And you can look back and say, wow, I could have done that a long time ago. That's where these people are. Friend slobs, if you will, Chelsea. If they didn't have to make difficult decisions, if they did not have to face their fear, if they did not have to take any risk, what we have here is people who are willing to voluntarily settle to be slaves of their greatest enemy. I don't know who you consider your greatest enemy. I believe the devil is in every shape, form, and fashion. But as long as they didn't have to fight him, as long as they didn't have to stand up, as long as they never had to make a stand, they were willing to voluntarily be the slave of their greatest enemy of all times. That's what they told the people. They said, look, you just wait. As long as you'll leave us in peace, we'll come out and we'll be your servants. We'll be your slaves for the rest of our lives. And Nahash says, okay. So I'll let you be my slave, but only if I get to chop out your eye. You know, all they asked was to be allowed to live. And for this small exchange of being allowed to live, these people were willing to volunteer not only their entire life, but think of it. Let's go a little further. If they set this thing, sometimes we see, we see addictions go for generations. We see alcoholism go for generations. We see divorce go for generations. We see things, and we see so often in the church, we see people that stop that. And they're like, no, nah, it, it's not going on in my family tree anymore. I, I'm eliminating that. I'm making a stand. I'm, I'm conquering where the devil has been ruining my family tree for years. I will leave better to my children. But here what we have is a people who are saying, you know what, we will be willing to be your slaves. And you know what they're setting up? They're saying, if you will let us live, we're not willing to only sacrifice ourselves. We're willing to sacrifice all the generations that come behind us. And we are submitting them to slavery by refusing to do anything about it right now. Wow, how tragic. How does that sound? How, how does that land in your heart to think, whatever the battle is, that that same battle unless it stood up and trusted God and, 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 and conquered in the name of Jesus, that it will continue for generations on behind. Does it seem a little bigger? Whatever the one thing was. Because, you know, we all influence people. We all affect people. Whether it's children, workers, co-workers, uh, uh, parents, some of us, people in the store, we all affect people, uh, positive or negative. Does anybody, are there certain people that you're around that, that lift you up? Yeah? Are there certain people around that you wish you wouldn't have run into that day? It's like there's always doom and despair. And you're like, you know, I, I can really do without doom day today. 
is that we have those. So, so what we're agreeing is that we all have effect on people. Because not only do those people have the ability to pick us up or, or bring down, we also carry that same, that same ability that we're picking people up. It's not always them, it's me, too, that has this ability. And so by not standing up, by not being willing to surrender, by not being willing to change the way even I think, then ultimately what I'm doing, I'm surrendering even generations of people that will come behind me and all those that I come in contact with that possibly I could have been a minister of God's victory to. Does that make sense? Yeah? No? Maybe? Possibly? Huh? Yeah? Okay. What? As long as they didn't have to take any risk, they were willing to voluntarily settle to be slaves of their greatest enemy. Hmm. How can I bring that out? As long as they didn't, as long as they could voluntarily, as long as they didn't have to take any risk, let me ask, do we have any risk takers in here? We have people who just like, there's a cliff on a bayou and it's like, I got to jump off of it. There's a, there's a bungee cord and the place is shut down, but it's still there. I got to try it, you know? Any, any risk takers? Uh, uh, for, for if you hunt or something, you know what? I have got to get 20 feet higher than anybody else in these woods. Uh, that, that was what I always liked, you know? Risk takers. Um, uh, look. Risk takers. Can't come up with another analogy right now. Adrenaline junkie. There you go. As long as they didn't have to take any risk, they were willing to voluntarily settle. Are there ever? Is there ever anything? Let's say for for fearful people. Do you ever see somebody else get the adrenaline, such as she said? The, see, see, sees the adrenaline flow and sees the adrenaline going, and they're telling you about what a great story was, and you're sitting back going, "Ain't no way I'd do that." It, do we have anybody like that? We're going somewhere with this, yeah. But do you secretly inside say, "Man, I wish I could. I wish I knew what that was like," because they're scared of the roller coaster that just zooms. But man, the effects of seeing the people that came off and seeing the excitement is like, "I want that." But without the ride, Does that make, or, yeah. What if, what if with 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 God, it's the same thing. These people, they want the the effects. They they want they want the reward. They want the what they want the blessing of being free and not running anymore. They want the blessing of not living in fear and not being on the run and not hiding. And they want the blessing of having it, keeping their right eye. They want the blessing of even not being a slaver, but they're not willing just to take the risk that it takes to get that victory. I remember a young lady I met uh, with her boyfriend a while back, and uh, 20-somethings, and I remember the first time I met him, the guy, you know, I mean, he's just a good old boy, good old country guy, just cuss and fuss about everything, you know, griped about the sun on the side it rose and the side it fell, and just... Just really, there, there was no bright side. There was no silver line anywhere in his life. And uh, just, you know, let's find things. You know, I hate your shoes. Why do you want to wear stupid shoes like that? You know I mean? Just whatever, and, and with a whole lot of adjectives. And I could see this, this young lady uh, behind him and staying a couple of feet behind uh, and during the conversation, and it was just like this sheer embarrassment all over. It was this, oh, my goodness. Oh, how quickly can we get away so that I am not that nobody else can see this guy that I'm with. Um, they'd been, they had like a two-year-old child at the time. I mean, it wasn't like it was brand new. Well, I began to run to these pe- into these people ever so often after that. And I remember a couple months went by, and actually the lady, the lady looked me up later and, and, and found where I was and called me and said, I want you to know, I, I just want to apologize for how my boyfriend acted today. I'm so embarrassed. I actually went that far with it. So anyway, a couple, a few months later, keep running into this person, and you get talking to him about Jesus, talking about the Lord, and there's this glow, this, this beam that happens, and she begins to tell the story of how she had been in church the whole time, and she'd been wishing that her boyfriend would come to church with her, and that he would just really, he would find Jesus, and he would just be this man of God, and just wanted all these wonderful things, and after about two and a half years of living with him, she found out he wasn't going to budge, and so she was like, you know what, I got to go. And she got her child, she separated the checking accounts, and she went. 
pretty big risk. You know, pretty, pretty, pretty big undertaking in, in, my, in my opinion. For months, this lady was, I kid you not, after that was a whole other lady. Just, I would run to her every now and then for consistently and just for months she would just this joy and this beam and always coming and talking about Jesus and talking about what God is doing in the church talking about somebody who got saved talking about lives being changed just always just wow and just this whole new life and how good it was but this day one particular day she came back after, after months of just shining about what had happened the risk of what if and she took it and she received all that God had been wanting to give her the whole time. 